Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm alone in Finland. This is Eve Online. I am wound up for a rant, although not at Eve. But I had a video planned, and then I got an email. I got a lovely email offering me some shiny deals. Some shininess for your Eve. And I thought, holy shit, I was going to talk about this. That's interesting. So let's get on with it. Now, as you've seen from the title, because I'm pretty much assuming that I'm going to take this as Is Eve by to win? Let's get straight to the details. No, it's not. It's absolutely not. Eve is not by to win in any way that any other game could possibly be by to win. And we've sort of gone over this before, but for those of you that are seeing this for the first time, or for those of you that weren't paying attention, or for the strange and unusual, although appreciated people that keep talking about my voice, and they're sort of listening to it for that and not paying attention to the subject matter. Essentially, EVE isn't pay to win. It can't be pay to win because of the nature of the entire way that this game works. It is a fantastic thing, but it's also a problem. And it's quite an interesting problem at the moment because of the way that this is running. So, I've actually made a mistake because I was chatting away. But let's get to this particular section, because I find this very interesting. Uh, I'm going to stack up a little mission while I'm doing this, because it's good to have something in the background. There we go, we're going to head over here. But if you look at this little opportunities thing, this is sort of a little bit of interest in this where it starts, because there's little bits here where you can see that, for instance, earn 50 LP for a corporation will get you your daily goals. So this is your little simple hook to bring you in. Um, it's just something interesting to get people to play and it's an upgrade from the previous system that they had because the previous system to get uh, sort of worth you had to log in every day and this is sort of they want you to log in 12 days a month um, which in my opinion is still a lot that they're asking for it's not a lot for historical eve players but the point is not the historical eve players the point is to be more appealing to new players um, any game that exists you will lose players over time so you want to try and entice new players and this is kind of where the problem with the entire nature of eve is that we're not getting in as many players as we're losing so with that sort of being said this is one of the ways that they do this and they make it nice and simple for instance if you want to have a look here it says manufacture an item okay so you log into the game um and it's something easy enough just to get you logged in. They don't want you to have to do too much. That's why, for instance, if it says tw destroy 25 capsule ears, it will put up things occasionally like scan five signatures that are duplicated because they want it to be a little bit easier for you to achieve those goals because the point of this isn't to get you in and playing constantly. It's just to get you in. The playing will take over once you've logged in. And this is sort of a... You see this in various different things with the psycho uh, psychology of addiction and stuff like this. But to um, to complete this, if I just go down to one of the systems, let's pick one that I know, append. That's a good one. Large armor, uh, medium armor repairer. Just one of these, hit one, there we go. We've hit a goal and I could log out now having achieved one daily goal, or I could go for the two of them and get the 10,000 skill points, which has been upped from the 5,000 previous, which is quite nice. Um, and then obviously you have these little goals on here where if you do your 12, you'll get, if you're in Omega, you'll get 150,000 plus 75,000, so 225,000 extra skill points for logging in 12 days. So it's something that's a little bit of an incentive, and this is the hook. And the reason I'm talking about the hook when I'm talking about this is because of some sort of misunderstandings. Like, for instance, people are talking about the, the paying for the main account, the Omega account, and how they disagree with it. Now, I don't disagree with this because EVE was always a subscription. And now with this, there is a little bit of a way around it where people can, uh, if they chose to level up faster, they could. So you could come in, you could bring up your skill points, you could buy skill points. I keep getting offers for them if I log into the actual EVE website. Um, but what you're actually doing is you're putting money in instead of time. So if you were a brand new player and you had the, the money, the will, all of that jazz, to be able to spend as much money as I, a player who started in 2005, has put into the game, 
because I've been subscribing for that length of time, then you could just dump it in one hit, get a character that's that skilled, and Bob's your uncle. Now, this is where people make this argument of pay to win. But it's not pay to win because having all the skills doesn't teach you how to do it. If you're a brand new player that comes in and just immediately ranks up, you don't know how to fly. And on top of that, you have most probably blocked Plex and you're going to lose it. Like, really badly going to lose it. I haven't seen this mission before. That's an interesting one. I've not been running missions up here in Caldari space for quite some time. So I'm just going to whack out some wardens. And just let them deal with whatever's annoying me. Um, but yeah, so that's this sort of situation around about it where you could level up, but leveling up doesn't get you anything extra in the game. It doesn't get you any more skills. Now, you could buy some shinier ships, but anybody who's been playing for any length of time will tell you that just because you're flying a shiny doesn't mean you are better or you're going to do better. Um, you could make some arguments for being a little bit better equipped against... Uh, PvP when somebody's using implants and they don't mind like spending money to replace the implants but some people without that level of money some people that generate income in game will use implants some people that make a lot of money there was one of the first videos I did was on somebody whose entire PvP was based around frigate based combat because their entire time in game aside from that PvP was building lots of money and they just knew not to spend it in somewhere that would cost them so they still get the PvP, they still get the enjoyment, but they don't risk anything for doing it. And frigate combat, in my opinion, is some of the most fun combat that you can have in a game. Um, if you go out in a battleship or you go out in a dreadnought and decide to, to pick a fight, you're almost always going to get crushed um, in those sort of areas just because of the nature of the big ships versus the small ships, which is just the way that some things sort of run. Whoops, I'm not paying attention to my drones. Yank those back in, throw out some warriors. Use the warriors to molest these wee things. But that's that sort of weird nature of the game where paying for extra doesn't get you extra in EVE. And that's why I don't believe it's um, it's pay to win in any way. Now, that being said, with all of those qualifications thrown out there, there is something, and the reason I said that's a bit problematic is because people assume these days when you come in and you pay money like that that it is pay to win that you are getting something for it and that is ironically something that would put people off a game if they were to come in with that mentality of i'm gonna buy everything i'm gonna be the best and then all of a sudden they lose it much like my drone has just disappeared because the, there isn't that understanding of the game and how the game works so doing something uh, that sort of dangerous um within eve going out and assuming that there could be a sort of um a pay to win aspect that they could sort of win that way they're gonna lose it they're gonna get disheartened because it's money down the drain and they're gonna quit the game and then there's also that sort of predatory aspect i've mentioned this before especially with the new accounts and how it flashes up you've got this this time limited offer this time limited offer oh buy this offer buy this offer and the time limit expires and then it comes up this is a new offer and it's the exact same one as the last one that's going on for a month and that predatory tactic is not good to see and it alienates a lot of people including myself who are fans of the, the game seeing that but also if you're just a new player coming in and you are not a complete idiot which the vast majority of people are not complete idiots, they see that, that could be immediately off-putting, is the first thing, the first communication from the company, the game company, to yourself is, here, we are going to try and exploit you for a whole load of money. That's, that's bad. So, saying that, let's have a look at this thing. Because this thing is also not great. Now, what's going on here? is we have this little situation where they have, instead of giving you a discount on Plex, as they usually do it several times a year, this time the Plex is the same price, but you get a little bit more of it. Except it's still not as much of a, an overall discount as has happened previously. Um, so what they are doing is not giving you as much. 
Um, and there is actually some lovely websites that track the price of Plex and the real world sort of exchange rates and how much the discounts are worth and stuff like this. But this is a, this isn't a good one. But it is being advertised as if it's the best thing. One of the emails that came through to me from one of the Plex places was going, "Oh, this is the best thing I have ever seen," and I'm sat there going, "No, it's not. Like basic math shows you it's not. I that's." I, I personally I was actually waiting for a discount on game time to come up um, to purchase more game time and this has just royally pissed me off and I'm like well okay no I'll I'll leave that for a while because that's just something I dislike in general and I understand the nature of a gaming company that's owned by a bigger company but at the end of the day if you're a staff member you should be turning around to the profit managers above you and going no this is going to kill our company stop trying to do this but then again it comes down to people who are in charge who decided to sell out their entire company in the first place so there's a little bit of that there and it's quite annoying from somebody who is invested in the game who does want the game to be better does want more people into it um, i still have some friendships external to eve in the real world that started in eve that i am very happy about um, I still have that sort of communication and I like chatting away to people and things like this and especially in the situation that I'm in where my I'm not blah, I'm basically sort of very isolated in the place that I'm in so it's nice to have that communication aspect to it um, but this puts me entirely off of the login button um, and it's something that at the moment I've got other stuff going on in my life so there's a whole load of stuff behind it that is sort of pushing this betrayal forward but at the same time it's the reason that I'm not making the content the way I was originally because as I'm going through this it seems to be fairly rapid that it's sort of this stuff is kind of amping up um, and it has been nice to get feedback from other people in the community that are annoyed by it as well um, but it's, st <laughs> it's still not nice to realize that it's not being paid attention to or the trick is changing to try and keep you engaged oh we won't give you a discount this time we'll give you more plex are you giving us a lot more plex no no we're not going to do that we're going to bring in this entire new system for making chip skins that is a little bit cheaper than what we were selling them for but let's be honest it's still really expensive considering what you get uh, that's annoying that's very annoying and i am the type of person that advocates for this stuff i buy skins in rust i still to this day buy skins in rust but i haven't played it in over a year because i want to support the company and when i do go to play it i do enjoy it and i like the company being there i like being able to support a company that works well that looks after their product that doesn't take the piss when it comes to uh, constantly buying things and I've ranted that much I've lost my wardens no I've not I pulled them back in and didn't notice but that's that sort of thing is that if you look after your company you get if you look after your your customers you get a loyal fan base that's what Eve has but it's being degraded and that's not great and unfortunately that's where I'm going to leave this section of the video this video entirely because that's what I'm kind of feeling at the moment is it's nobody's giving a shit I've got some other stuff that I want to do I've got some other games that I want to do if people want to see them but please give us a schmear down in the comments oh one very specific question if you've gotten this far I particularly if I'm watching a YouTube video and somebody very immediately does that oh could you like and subscribe and all of that stuff and they do it right before any of the content or their video I usually, if I'm in a good mood, just don't touch the buttons. But if I'm in a bad mood, I'll immediately hit dislike. I have a question for everybody watching. Do you do that as well? Is it just me? Am I just a purebred arsehole? I know I kind of am. But just if you would do us the favour and see if that's an abnormal thing for myself or other people. But then on the entire situation, if you have the free time and you could comment... I'd be happy to see other people's sort of views on this, especially if you are uh, sort of contradicting or contrasting with what I'm saying. Always, always, always willing to hear opposing viewpoints, more than willing, because at the end of the day, that's how you're sure if your viewpoint is more accurate, less accurate, or if you could adjust it in some way. So always feel free to comment, try and be nice to each other, try and be nice in general, it makes the world a better place. But 
I do not mind hearing criticism or people that disagree with me, any of that jazz. I am always willing to hear it. So, with that, I shall say adieu, and at some point you will actually see the rest of these particular ships, because this lovely little one, I wanted to call it a widow there, because it's been so long since I flew a rattlesnake, but this one is one that I have actually had since 2006, I think. 2006-2007. It is a very old ship, as is the uh, the Raven that is also may have flashed up on the screen when I was loading into this. Um, these are my original mission running ships from back in the day, uh, to the point where I had to adjust some of the fittings because some stuff has been changed. Um, but I'm going to do a bit of a run through of mission running in general because it seems to be a, a lacking piece of um, content these days. Not many people sort of have respect for it or do it or things like that. Um, and I wanted to do a bit of a run through just because of the fact that I do it to relax. I quite enjoy doing it as a little sort of pastime. Put something on Netflix or uh, Disney Plus or something else going sailing. Um, and then uh, bring up the missions and run through a few missions just to sort of relax. This was my sort of go-to relaxation. Um, and I'm curious... Uh, I'm curious about how, the, how other people do it, but there was some questions at some point that sort of caught me off guard because I thought it was common knowledge. So I thought I'd just put up a full run through of all of the different systems I'm using. And part of that being um, there was a particular system that was used to amalgamate a whole load of ships together. And I kind of wanted to extend on that, but unfortunately the way the test server is at the moment, I've not had the time to explore it. And I wanted to put it out as a little bit of a, um, call out to anybody watching, everybody watching, the general community, for a battle cruiser to run all of the burner missions above the frigate ones. So above the, the burners and the team burners, the anomic agents, just the, um, the, the multiple ones where you can take in a battle cruiser, I wanted to make a battle cruiser that could be sort of used for all of them. Um, so this is a bit of a future video and what I am trying to plan and the reason I've sort of set up the way I have. But just with all that being said, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.